What do you say about sports today, Pete? I know we've got a new champion crowned in Boston. 18 championships, world championships for the Celtics. Puts them one ahead of the Lakers. What do you think? Yeah, it's pretty impressive. I think you and I talked about this one, and we both kind of felt like, okay, they had the one loss, and it was a big loss. But that's because they basically said, you know what? We've pretty much lost this game. We're going to sit down. We're just going to kind of cool out a little bit, and then let's get them on the next one because that game was over. <laughs> that game four was over. Game five, well, it kind of came down to Luka and Kyrie, and they just could not hit their shots, John. When you look at what they were shooting from the field and from three-point land, it was pretty bad. Not that Boston was great, but Boston was certainly better. And Tatum and Brown, uh, you can't say enough about how good those guys really are as a tandem. I mean, it's really interesting because for the people who don't follow basketball very closely, those guys are – it's very unusual to find two guys on the same team that play the same position, which is what they both do. They're both on the court at the same time, and yet they're playing the same spot. It's really interesting. It's like having two quarterbacks on the field at one time. So it's really interesting to see – how well they do it. That coach is a guy that I I think the world of the coach. I, I love him socially, and I love him as a coach from a professional standpoint because what he needed to do with these guys. Porzingis actually got an opportunity. Again, he's going to have to get surgery anyway. But what a what an unbelievable run that they had. And you know what, 18, uh, they're not that far away, John, from probably looking at maybe getting a few more over the next three, four years. And I'm going to tell you this. Brown already has his $300 million contract. I think Tatum's going to probably get about 330 because he's up for it as well, John. So it's going to be some big numbers. Here's another problem, though, that I'm going to gripe a little bit at Adam Silver because, you know, I'm always on the guy about load management. He doesn't do a damn thing about it, right? I mean, it's just pathetic. But outside of that, how about this? What What is one of the reasons why maybe there's less interest in the NBA Finals than – Maybe there could be. John, here's the dates of when they played the games. June 6th, three days later on the 9th, four days later on the 13th, then they played on the 14th, and then another three days before they played last night on the 17th. Why is there such a gap there? I think people lose interest because of it. You know, there's it, they, they just aren't doing it right. You know what? We, we all watch the regular season. They can play a game and a game and a game and a game. And I'm not saying it has to be every day, but you can't have three days, then you got to wait. Three days, then you got to wait. I mean, it's they've got to figure that out. And I think that's part of, it's not the only problem, but that's part of the problem when you look at some of the ratings sometimes. I don't think that they're they're going at it the right way. How about you? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously – during the season, NBA teams routinely, routinely play back-to-back. -back. Yeah. So they'll play on a Monday, Tuesday. That's what I mean, back-to-back. -back. Um, and all of a sudden, the playoffs come, and you got to take two days, three days off. I don't get that. And I think you're right, Pete. It does kind of uh, uh, diminish the enthusiasm that people have, especially if they're not the direct fans of those two teams. Dallas, yeah, they're going to watch. Um, Boston area, are they going to watch? Of course. Um, but for the rest of the country, it's kind of like, well, geez, uh, do they have a game tonight? Let me see. I don't know if they got a game tonight. You look up at the TV in the bar. No, no, no not a game tonight. Okay. Well, <laughs> anyway, um, I, I will give Kyrie credit for this, Pete. A couple of years ago, he said he was going to bring a title back to Boston, and he sure did. <laughs> Shooting those bricks up like that. As you and I know from Luca uh, saying, you know, you know, I think he's a construction worker because he's certainly shot a lot of bricks off. <laughs> but yeah, he brought the championship back to Boston, back to the garden, and I think all the people in Boston are grateful to him for it. <laughs> oh man, that that's a shot out of the pit. Well, if it's cold, it should be. Yeah. All right, next I got to go with this one, John. You and I both love hard knocks. It's fun. It gives everybody who's yep. never played. John played with the Bears. I bounced around like a you know a football getting thrown around, but in the NFL for a number of years. And you know what? It's fun to see the inside, right? The the hard knocks, the inside. Well, 
This one I'm not focusing on for the that preseason stuff. This is the in-season, which they started doing, John, a couple of years ago, where they follow a team during the season. And huh? the debut is comes comes later on. The debut for this year, it's going to be December 3rd. But they will have been filming along the way. But who they chose is interesting because they didn't just choose a team to follow. They decided to go with the AFC um, the AFC East, John, which I find absolute or North rather, excuse me. I find it absolutely fascinating. And here's why. When you look at the teams, you got Baltimore, Cincinnati, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh. Do you know that last year that was the best of all of them combined? That that was the best conference. All of them had winning records. Average record was somewhere 60% or better. And how about these quarterbacks that we're going to be able to watch, John? You got Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow. Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, they're on the same team at Pittsburgh. But it's going to be interesting, I think, just to follow the path of these teams. And, you know, I think it's going to be fun to see Baltimore, too, because they've got, obviously, Lamar Jackson, a great quarterback. Now they've got themselves one of the best running backs in all of football. I think there's a lot to watch, a lot of entertainment value, and the competitiveness is going to be there. I mean, it's, you know, and you get a Harbaugh. You always want a Harbaugh involved if you can, and now you got a Harbaugh as well. So I'm pretty excited about this one. What do you think? I mean, I I like the idea of doing you know a whole division like they're doing. I think that makes it pretty pretty wild. Yeah, and uh, that way, like we've sort of surmised, um, you can draw in more fans yeah. because if you only have the Jets, like last year, Hard Knocks or whatever. Um, you know, you're going to get New York and because it's New York and, you know, biggest metro in America, you're going to get people from all over the country that will watch it. But to have Cincinnati and to have Buffalo and Pittsburgh and so forth, Pete, Baltimore, um, it seems like you're getting, a, uh, you know, a dose of old time football from, of course, uh, Pittsburgh, because mm -hmm. Mike Tomlin and those guys uh, with the Steelers, that's pretty much as old school as it gets in the NFL these days. Yep. And as you already said, um, you got Derrick Henry as part of that with Baltimore. You got uh, Joe Burrow, you know, one of the young stars mm -hmm. um, who, along with Mahomes, is one of those guys that you just can't look away. If he's on the field, he can beat you. Yep. So I'm looking forward to it. I think there'll be a lot of interesting games that they get to cover. And again, not just training camp. I think training camp is great. It gives people an idea of what it was like to be me, <laughs> to be cut in training camp, because I was. Um, but it's, I think, a cool thing to see how training camp uh, works. But now we get to see, okay, we're going to see them coming off the bus, Pete. Yep. And not just, oh, who's the worst dressed, which was about <laughs> all we saw this past year was, oh, okay, here's the weird guys that show up in – you know, in their shorts, or here's the guys that show up dressed like they're going to a Paris runway show or whatever. <laughs> um, we'll get to hear what they're talking about maybe a little bit, Pete. Obviously, they'll have to cut some of that out, but we'll get to hear a lot more than we usually get before the game. And folks, Pete and I were lucky enough to be uh, guests of Jerry Jones down at uh, AT&T Stadium back in the day. Mm -hmm. And to see those players coming out of the locker room and marching basically through the crowd, Pete, yeah. because they have that blast in thing where the players march right through there and the fans are banging on it and everything else. <laughs> and you get to, you know, once the players are dressed, Jerry puts them up on the big screen. You can see the players in the locker room, you know, slapping each other and things <laughs> like that, getting all fired up. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Most people never get to see that. So now we'll get to see that, and I think that'll be ratings. Mm -hmm. And so the NFL, for all the mistakes they make, they still get the idea that people really like getting inside and seeing the inside view of what's going on. Yeah, and that and, and they've done a magnificent job with Hard Knocks. It, it really is great, and it gives people that total insider view. And now it's during the season, which they've already done a couple, but it's during the season with this entire division. It makes it pretty amazing, and and you, all of them were good. I mean, you got Jamar Chase as well with Burrow. I mean, everywhere you look, there are superstars out there, and it's what people want to see, and I think it's going to be great.